Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Today is day 131, and today our work is going to continue focusing on linear systems. Specifically, we're going to be focused on figuring out how do we find solutions to linear systems, and we're going to do that by using substitution. At this point, you already should have taken some time to read through today's objectives and key terms. Objective one says to understand, this is familiar to us, understand the solution to an equation is the value we can plug in or substitute for the variable that makes the equation true. Objective two is to understand that a common solution to a linear system, linear systems being two or more linear equations at the same time, a common solution to linear systems is the solution that's going to work for both of our equations in the linear system. Previously, we've been working with graphs and finding the common solution when we're given graphs. Today, we're going to continue to find common solutions to linear systems. But this time, we're only going to be given an equation. And substitution, this new key term here, is going to be our key to trying to find the common solution without a graph. Again, by this point, you already should have worked through today's exploratory problems on your own with your partner, tried to figure these out on your own. And now you're analyzing your work from this video as part of step three. So for part A, we're going to work right through that problem now. Part A says shown below is a system of linear equations, meaning two or more linear equations that we work together at once. Part one said if you graphed this linear system onto a coordinate plane, a fancy word for a graph, explain how you could use the graph to determine any common solutions. So this should be familiar. This is what we worked on the last couple days. We understood that for graphs, each point on the line of our graph was a solution. So if both equations were graphed out, you looked for the point where the lines crossed intersected is really the key term we want to be using there. So this is going to show up today when you're working through problem number one in the practice problems. Let me tab over. Problem one in the practice problems is going to have you finding common solutions based on a graph. That was work that we did the last couple days and hopefully as part of today getting going. You said, well, if we had a graph here, we could have just looked to see where the lines intersect. Instead of having a graph, though, we're just provided with two equations today. But the good thing is it's multiple choice. They say one of these four answer choices has to be the common solution to our linear system. Your job is to use substitution. Let me go ahead and highlight that. You're going to use substitution to identify the common solution. You all should be familiar with substitution. It's replacing a variable with the number that we think it's equal to. Mr. Neville would have called this the plug part when he said plug and chug last year when you were checking solutions to simpler equations that you were solving. So here today, it's a linear equation. We have a y and an x. So we're going to take a look at this whiteboard. We're going to put the first equation, y equals negative 2x plus 7 on there. Let me head fix that. Sorry y equals negative 2x plus 7, and then we're going to also work with the equation y equals 3x minus 8 in a little bit. So y equals 3x minus 8. These are the two equations that make up our linear system. I'm going to go ahead and focus our first couple answer choices. A says 2 and 3, B says 1 and negative 5, and C says 3 and 1. So I'm going to write down each of those answer choices on my whiteboard. I'm going to go ahead and put the whiteboard full screen so we can see better now. First thing I'm going to do is check if this first answer choice, answer A, when x is 2 and y is 3. If that's going to be a common solution, it needs to work in both of these equations or make them true, balanced on both sides, while I plug it in. So I'm going to replace the x with 2, negative 2 times 2 plus 7, and that has to equal y, which according to this solution should be 3. Negative 2 times 2 makes negative 4. So this becomes negative 4 plus 7, and negative 4 plus 7 makes positive 3. Same thing as saying 7 minus 4. So we see at least for answer choice A, it works in the first equation, the red one. And we need to see, does it work in the blue equation? So I'm going to replace over here the y with 3, the x with 2, 
3 times 2 is 6. So we're left with 6 minus 8, which gives us 6 minus 8 makes negative 2. We see even though answer choice A worked in the red equation, it did not work in the purple equation. So that tells me it's a solution to red, but it's not a solution to the blue equation that we worked with. So as we take a look back at our work, I would be marking A in red as a distractor. And this whiteboard here would be great evidence to be plugging in over here when you need to insert the first image of your work. Linear systems are complicated. We have two different equations with two variables, an X and a Y. We have a bunch of answer choices. So yes, this problem takes some work, but you all should have the skills you need to keep working through and see which one out of B, C, and D is going to be the correct answer. Make sure to insert a second image of your work at some point. The next one we're going to take a look at is problem B. At this point, I'd encourage you to pause this video if you struggled with B. Try to figure out B with your partner because hopefully now that you understand common solutions and substitution better, maybe you have a better chance at B. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the work for problem B. Focus on reading the problem, the introduction to this multi-part problem first, and then we'll focus on part one. It says shown below is a system of linear equations. We know this is a linear system because we're working with two linear equations at the same time. Part one asked us, based on the information provided, do we already know part of the common solution for this linear system? So remember, a common solution to a linear system is going to be the value for x and y that works in both equations. And we should notice something about this linear system. The first equation says x equals negative 4. We know for a fact, without any doubt, the only common solution that can work for both equations must have an x value of negative 4 because that's the only x value that works in the green equation. So I would say yes. I need to highlight all that. Yes, we know that for the common solution, x has to equal negative 4. We have no other choice. So if I know half of my common solution for a linear system, I can go ahead and take that information, the fact that x has to be equal to negative 4, and use it in the other equation, the 2x plus 3y equals 7 equation. So I'm going to write that equation down, 2x plus 3y equals 7. And over here, I'm going to note, of course, that x has to be equal to negative 4. We don't know what y is yet, the other half of our common solution. But hopefully some of you are thinking substitution, or as Mr. Neville would say, plug and chug. I'm going to plug the negative 4 in for x. It's going to become 2 times negative 4, because I know x has to be equal to negative 4 based on the other equation. The rest of the equation remains the same, but now we've transformed it from an x and y, a two-variable equation, to only y. We should be able to peel the onion or solve this equation for y. We'll work through that quickly. Negative 8 plus 3y equals 7 after we multiply the 2 times negative 4. We need to peel the negative 8 or get rid of this term from the left expression to start getting y alone. So we do the inverse. We add 8. have to do that to both sides. We get 3y equals 15. Hopefully some of you are solving that by inspection. 3 times some number has to equal 15. We know that number must be 5 because 3 times 5 is 15. So at this point now we know the common solution, the solution for x and y that works in both of these equations. x has to be negative 4, y will have to be 5. That solution works for both equations. Thanks for watching the end of the video. Thank you for continuing the good work as you work through the practice problems. The last thing I'm going to note, make sure that all of you should be filling out something for part C right now. One new thing you've learned about linear systems today before you're spending 25 or 35 minutes working through practice problems and practicing these skills.